Thank you to Passive for sponsoring today's video. They're an official partner of Quest Trade and a number of other brokers if you're looking for some tools to keep your portfolio sharp. Check them out for free using my link in the description below. What's up you guys and welcome back to the channel. If it is your first time here, my name is Brandon. As always, we do have our investing academy down below. And our most recent video that we posted on RioCan got really well recepted. I know how much you guys love the REITs and in particular, you guys love the monthly income. If you did, however, watch that video, you'll know that my conclusion was that it may not be the most attractive stock for me at the moment. It still very well may be a great purchase, but my conclusion was that there may be some better options out there. And that's what leads into the video today. This is a REIT that I've established is a phenomenal option at the moment. In fact, it's one that I would consider buying for myself if I did want to get into the REIT space, which you guys already know my opinion on that. But I say we let's just dive on into the video. If you enjoy, give this a thumbs up because the stock that we are talking about today is the company Realty Income Corp. The ticker here is O and we're looking at a 4.58% dividend. I will note that this does trade on the New York Stock Exchange and I'll talk to you about that a bit later in the video. To take a look into this company's historical performance, over the past few decades, it's achieved an annual compounded rate of return of 15.3%. This is dating back to 1994, and you see it's actually outperformed a lot of our broader indexes, including the broader REIT index. This is, of course, the blue line relative to the rest of the bunch. As we did with RioCan, let's take a brief moment to look at the composition or the different types of property this REIT owns. Very similar case with retail coming in at the largest component. This is a, this represents 85% of ref, rent revenues. Secondly comes in the industrial buildings. That represents about 10% of the company's breakdown. And then we have office and agriculture representing a smaller portion. But one thing to know in terms of size is that this is a larger company with the grand total currently of over 6,500 properties. And it's not to say that this is a comparison video to RioCan, it's just the fact that it's just off the top of my head and we just filmed the video, so I'm kind of making these comparisons. This is kind of should be a standalone video, but in comparison to RioCan, which is a company that just cut their dividend distribution by 33%, Realty Income just announced their 109th common stock monthly uh, dividend increase. This is actually the 93rd consecutive quarter of increases. This again is monthly payouts, just to be clear. And somebody asked if we could do the per share basis. They actually pay a dividend of 23 cents per share monthly. This is including the raise, and that's the equivalent of $2.08 per share annually. So obviously one share would get you $2.08 per year, uh, $2.80 I should say, per year in dividends. If you had 100 shares, that'd be $280 in passive income. And if you had a thousand shares, that'd be $2,800, $2,800 per year in passive income. You can obviously do the math there to reflect your own case scenario if you were going to be looking into this stock further. And although this company does have certain areas that are impacted very similar to a Rio Ken, they do have tenants such as gyms. They do have tenants such as movie theaters. If we were to take a look at their top 20 tenants, this is actually a much better picture than what we recently looked at. I've gone ahead and put either some green rectangles around companies that are actually considered investment grade tenants. These are some of the top of the line tenants as we'll look at in a second. The red ones obviously are where we see struggle. And out of the top 20, we have, in my opinion, four here that are at more of a risk. LA Fitness, Regal Cinemas, AMC Theaters, and then Lifetime Fitness. This represents about seven to 8% ballpark of the top 20 tenants revenue in aggregate. What does contrast that though, however, if you do look at some of these names, these are all pretty much essential services outside of the uh, four that we've highlighted here. Even the non-essential services, you'll note that they are investment grade because an important metric to look at from their most recent quarter was that despite the pandemic, despite going through tough times, they still collected 93% of their rents from their tenants. And just another way of breaking that down even further is that, again, across the board, 93%, 93.1% for the total portfolio, 91% from the top 20. And from the investment grade ones, which I had highlighted green, they got 100% of the rent uh, recovered from those companies. So 
I do think that they have a stronger portfolio. In fact, one of the things this company has done very well is while growing their portfolio through acquisitions and uh, expanding their property, their total properties, they still maintained a phenomenal portfolio occupancy. 98.6% as of the most recent quarter, and that's something that stayed very, very steady over the past number of years. This to me is currently an alternative. This to me is actually more of an attractive option than looking at RioCan at the moment. There's nothing to say you can't own both. If maybe you already own RioCan, this could be another option to complement it. Obviously, real estate is a tough area to be in for any company across the board, but a company like this has a more diverse portfolio. They have more diverse properties, and they've had a track record of showing that, hey, even despite the tough uh, pandemic that we're going through right now, 93 consecutive quarters of dividend increases. That's something that I like to see. Although the yield, you could argue, is a bit smaller, 4.58, I'd take that trade off. Uh, I'd take the consistency and the reliability over the high dividend any day, especially if I were somebody you know, retired or somebody really depending on this monthly dividend. But the shares trade today for $61.48 cents USD. Again, this is a US company and that is the ticker O. And I feel like that video, this video went by rather quick. So I'm wondering if I should throw in a bonus stock for today. I think I'm going to do it. This was supposed to be for another video. The title of this video was a dividend. Well, I was going to find two dividend aristocrats, but I only have the one now, but I'm just going to throw it in for you guys. One dividend aristocrat that you haven't heard about. And this one is right here in Canada. So for anybody that has didn't want to buy the U.S. stock, well, here's one that you can look at. I don't think it's as attractive of a purchase at the exact moment, but it's the company Northwest Company, ticker NWC.TO. This one does trade on the TSX. You see here trading for $35 Canadian. And even after the strong run-up, it's bounced strong after COVID. Today, we're trading at a 4.02% dividend. What I find is very funny about this company is their website, almost as ugly as Berkshire Hathaway's. Maybe a sign of a strong company is a company that doesn't have, uh, they don't spend a bunch of money on developing a crazy website because yeah, the Northwest company's website, I gotta say is pretty, pretty bland, but hey, it's a good thing we're not investing for their website. This is a company as a background that is based out of Winnipeg, Manitoba, and they provide food uh, services, or food and service, I should say, pharmacy goods, all sorts of products to people in rural communities. So you'll actually find these uh, stores and this company very apparent in you know, Northern Canada. You'll find them in areas like uh, Alaska, even the Caribbean they have, but yeah, Saskatchewan, they had a new uh, couple buildings pop up. But just to go over a couple of the names, North Mart is one of their companies, one of their stores, Giant Tiger, Quick Stop, and cost you less. This one, that one cracked me up, cost you less. And the Alaska Commercial Company. And that's just to name a few, but those are some of their big chain names. This is another company that falls on the essential service side of things, hence why they've done so well throughout the pandemic. Grocery being a major component, convenience, uh, you have some smaller units, but again, we'll call this an essential service provider. They actually posted a very strong quarter, believe it or not. The company declared a 36 cents per share dividend along with actually posting some strong growth. This is above average growth for the company, 6.4%. I know that may st not sound like a lot to compare to some companies, but for a grocery retailer, that's not too bad. They were up 17% on a same store basis. But yeah, this stock as well, we can actually clarify both of these stocks today, this one and the REIT. These would both be considered dividend aristocrats. A dividend aristocrat is a term that's used when a stock has increased their dividend, uh, the annual dividend for five or more consecutive years. This company has been inching it up, knocking it up slowly and surely. In fact, they've actually been increasing their dividends for eight years. Some of the metrics that suggest why this is the case is they are, again, they're not growing like a crazy fast. You should not expect that out of a company like this. Over the past decade, revenues have grown by about a billion dollars. Uh, some of that through actually acquisitions. But the net income has remained very stagnant, a slow and gradual increase along with the earnings per share. They've seen the gradual bump up. And the dividends, as I said, have just been slowly increasing. Since 2012, uh, we have seen we saw the drop down there. And since then, they've been gradually inching them up. We do note that the payout ratio is a little bit high 
And one thing that I'd like to note about payout ratio, some people say payout ratio is, of course, the percentage of uh, earnings that the company's paying out in dividends. It's their profit that they kick back. Some people like to put these uh, thresholds, these lines in the sand where I can't go past this or I can't uh, invest in a stock that has a payout over 60 or 30 or whatever the case is. Each company has their own unique uh, range that we could say. And if you actually look, the five-year average for this company has been up in the fifth up in the 80% range. Today, actually the current one or the trailing 12 months, we actually see that down at 53% of their earnings. It's not necessarily a bad thing because especially with a company like this, they're not growing the dividend crazy fast. They're just, again, inching it up by a couple percentage points, slow and steady one. I would say that a company like this actually has a slight edge or a competitive advantage, an angle in the communities or the markets they operate in. They are... Uh, for the most part, when you think to these rural areas, they're very proud of their background and their heritage and what it is. They don't necessarily like these big chain companies coming in and just taking over. There's something about a traditional company with history that they like. And this is not a company that is going to be taking over the world or blowing up by any means. But with that in mind, it could suit a very a small role in your portfolio. It could be a company if you're looking for more stability, if you're looking for stable dividends, it could be one to do that. So to see a stock today trading at $35.82, obviously it would have been a nice one to pick up on the dip. Again, I wouldn't be uh, rushing in to buy this stock. It's one that I'm going to throw on the watch list. But being a Canadian stock, being one that gives you exposure to the grocery sector, which you don't have too many options. A lot of the staples options are out in the US or even the UK or Europe, I should say. But even today, you're looking at a 4.02% dividend with the P ratio of 14. It could be a very interesting one to look at. And it's a company that I don't think many of you guys have heard about. If you have, leave a comment down below. But it is a quiet little dividend aristocrat that we have right here in our backyards. If you guys enjoyed today's video, be sure to smash that thumbs up button. Be sure to smash that subscribe button and the bell for notifications. This was actually a bonus stock, I swear to God. I was not uh, planning on it, but that first video went a little bit shorter than uh, planned. But hey, I hope you guys enjoyed it. At least we did get to throw in some Canadian options, which I know you guys love. If you are a beginner to the stock market and you want to learn more, if you are uh, needing help, assistance, or you are looking for training on how to get started and you want to ask questions and meet other students, check out our Investing Academy. It's the first link down below. We got courses and training and a community that can help do all that for you. But yeah, that's it for the video, guys. I also want to say, if you have stuck around this far, thank you guys for 90,000 subscribers. We just passed that, I believe, earlier today or yesterday. And I know we're just inching up to the 100K mark, but so many of you have been supporting since day one. And I haven't got the chance to just come out and say thank you guys for a long time. I really, really appreciate it. We got a big milestone and we got a major announcement coming soon. So stay tuned for that. Biggest announcement ever. Like crazy big. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And I'll see you in the next video.